So, with Corona and COVID-19, it seems like the lockdown has claimed a lot of unnecessary victims, I'd say, right? Um, a lot of people have been getting cancelled along the way. A lot of stray bullets have been shot. And people are just, you know, it just seems like, you know, because we've because we've all been locked, uh, locked down and industries have kind of come to a grinding halt, especially, you know, the industry that I'm kind of, I'm in or not kind of been that I'm in as a DJ right and as a dance music aficionado that industry has specific has essentially been you know the rug's been pulled underneath from its feet so people are at home bored penniless and just depressed in it so i don't blame people for kind of pointing fingers at other djs or producers that are far more successful than they are for maybe no fault of their own and especially when they do loads of not unnecessary missteps especially during the time in Asia we're living in at the moment with, you know, this um, social awakening, it seems like with police brutality in America and racial injustice, all this stuff that's going on. I can understand why they can really grind your gears when you see somebody that happens to just not get it. And this is another good example of it. But I also think it's maybe a little bit over the top, some of the reactions. So what I'm talking about, this DJ called, I'm going to, I think this is how you pronounce her name. I think it's Sarah Kin, right? Sarah Kin, Sarah Kin. Um, I've seen her play on that radio station in Berlin called Hoa or Hauer, Hauer, how you pronounce that name, H-O-E-R, I think it's spelled phonetically, but it's actually pronounced with the double dot on the O, so I've seen her play on there a bit, you know, hard style kind of DJ, um, your quintessential Berlin sort of like pretty girl DJ kind of style, I would say, right, hard style, loads of jungle, um, fast, really aggressive style of play, looks like she's having a ball behind the decks and has a great time, and just, you know, somebody that seems like they generally have a lot of love for the music and for the scene, and they're kind of, you know, doing their thing, got a little label going on, take loads of cute pictures, blah, 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 the standard stuff that you know and love, right, what happened there, don't know what happened there, the standard stuff that you know and love, cool, no problem, so she ran into some issues, right, um, online based on this t-shirt that she put out i'm gonna get up on here for you guys um this is a t-shirt where essentially um techno twitter which is what they're referring it to right people online who are essentially um quick to call out any sort of uh social faux pas someone does no nah, that's not really fair techno twitter is um essentially it acts as like a how would you call it? It acts as a sound, maybe as a as a place where people can get held accountable so for some of the most questionable things. Because that's part of the reason why I was really upset when they got rid of the resident advisor comment section. Because sometimes resident advisor can, you know, go on these long diatribes about nothing, post, you know, n nonsense articles, crazy reviews. And the comment section was a good way to kind of gauge what was actually really going on. And sometimes you had, sometimes, you know, you had trolls, you had fans, you had sycophants, you had haters. But sometimes you also had people that came in and say, hey, if you don't, you don't listen to what RA is saying, look at these other people who that person has been inspired by. They do far better things or they're, uh, you know, a far better artist. And it kind of give you a, a but great understanding of what is going on in the scene but with the comments gone it's kind of hard to gauge exactly what the situation is so twitter has sort of like acted as that so if anything the the deletion of the ra comments has maybe heightened the amount of vitriol that gets uh, pushed on twitter really for the most part i think with the comments it would have maybe dumbed it down a bit but hey so this girl called Sirikin, she makes this graphic right um that i'm assuming she stole f from somewhere else um, so this is a tweet from a guy on Twitter. It says a Berlin based fast techno DJ released a t-shirt with this on the back and it's a, it's a screenshot of Sarakin's Instagram profile. It says, fuck the BPM police. Now the graphic itself isn't nothing to write home about, right? It's a bit run of the mill, shitty graphic. No one really gives a shit, but you know, I'm a big fan of DJs making merch. I've said it from the get go. I think it's a real untapped resource for DJs to kind of you know build a bit of a fan base build a bit of a fan club around their around their name um maybe an a, an opportunity to you know put on some of your friends and let them do some design work an opportunity to maybe collect make something collectible for your fans to maybe buy when you do your tour just a great way to kind of engage people um and i've also said you know people should be shameless if you're a dj you should be slinging these things after your set you should go to every set with you know 30 t-shirts rolled into your bag they just sell after this after you play you know cash in hand whatever it may be um 
no no shame in doing that whatsoever because i think if i went to a gig because sometimes buying those shirts online and having them shipped to your house you know it's too much money but if you can just buy them at a the gig i'd do it but you know djs can get a bit you know a bit weirded out about that sort of stuff and it might not be the best look in terms of clubs they might not want you to do that they might think it's a bit disrespectful i don't know long story short but i'm not a fan I'm, i don't mind djs doing much but obviously with what's going on in the world right now the timing is a bit dead in it like to, to put a t-shirt out that says fuck the bpm police with everything that's going on with police brutality it probably isn't the right time and this is where the whole as the whole kind of phrase read the room comes into play which is quite ironic considering she's a dj she didn't read the room she didn't read the room she puts a t-shirt out and she gets absolutely ripped to pieces by people online and justifiably so right but i think it went a bit too far because she ended up kind of like writing a really sincere apology note that didn't really get any traction. The, the same people that were kind of ripping her to pieces because she made a t-shirt didn't really say much when she put the apology out, which kind of made me think that's a bit sinister, right? Fair enough, she made a mistake or maybe she made two or three, but if she rectified it and apologized, I think that should be enough. And I do think maybe the issue at hand isn't that she made the t-shirt. It's just more so what i mentioned previously about the reese cooper i think there is this idea there is this um you, you are allowed to feel a little bit annoyed when you see somebody fast more successful in the field that you're in when they've probably only been there. and i think i've maybe looked online i think it i assumed that she might have been djing let's say for four years maybe less than that and she's you know all over the place playing good gigs part of a great little cl a crew of girls i forgot the other one she plays with something clara or something i forgot her name but you know part of a little cool scene of girls in berlin that play everywhere so i, I can't I, I can understand why it can be annoying but taking out your frustration on her is a bit unfair because she's not really the she's the um she's basically the symptom she's not really the cause of what's going on in the scene at the moment um and then there's another little tweet here I'll quickly show you i think this is her of actually wearing the t-shirt itself that she sold where is it yep there it is so this is from the business techno um account which you definitely follow because it keeps you up to date with all the um techno tw uh, news that's going on um it says here the caption says um what's going on what's go what's who's going to bring police brutality towards Huh? So who's going to bring police brutality towards black people to Sarah King's attention? Okay, <laughs> there was never a better time to start selling limited shirts like these, eh? And this is just one week after the last apology. What last apology that she did one week ago? I apologize for my belly. Oh, she apologized for belly dancing. Okay, this is insane, bro. So I'm assuming she's Tunisian or Moroccan or something, right? So that's why she's belly dancing. It's a cultural thing, but she's a poet. What I, I guessing? What she, did she do a dance that people thought she was twerking? I don't know what this is about, but let's stick with the fuck the BPM police one. Um, so this is her modeling the shirt itself, and you know, and again, the graphic isn't anything right home to bat. It's not that big of a deal, really, but you know, I, I get I get the sentiment, but it's just the timing, it's just really, really, really bad. And then the apology itself wasn't that bad either. Where's, where's, where's the apology is here i thought the apology was very sincere but it didn't get any love no traction whatsoever so this is her apology from the twitter profile i'm gonna put it up on the screen she says hey everyone as most of you know i recently released some t-shirts with the slogan fuck the bpm police i recognize my mistake and i wanted to explain that i'm deeply sorry and for the several reasons first of all for failing to see this slogan was insensitive insensitive especially regarding the current events happening in the u.s now the only issue i have with her right this is that is she for lack of a better word how dumb is this girl like legitimately because i'm on the side i think the the reaction was a bit over the top but she's a little bit dim in it because i remember when the shirt first came out she was getting a she was getting some pushback she didn't really listen to it though she kept replying to everybody that was asking about when it was going to get restocked and stuff and oh i missed out but she wasn't necessarily replying to the pushback to the questions to the, like the hey why are you doing this in this moment she didn't really offer any sort of um, explanation she just kind of pushed it to one side and then when the noise got too much she kind of crumbled deleted a picture and then come out an apology and then now you're saying oh for the i should have known better because what's going on in the u.s it's like come on man figure it out read the room and if any and if anything right like if you're hell-bent on selling these t-shirts again this is probably a really snide way of doing it but it seems like the most it seems like the the techno twitter side that she's probably not going to be ever friends with on twitter the guy the kind of people that would call her up on this are mostly on twitter 
So she really wanted to sell the t-shirts and get no blow back. She should just put them on Instagram and Facebook. Because if you go through the comments on Instagram and Facebook of that Fata BPM police post, you'll see not much. Um, people don't really understand what the issue is. They're sort of like saying it's, they're making a, uh, a mountain out of a molehill, blah, 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 blah. But she's so, um, it seems like she's so, uh, what do you call it? She seems to be so unaware of what's going on around her that she can't even, you know, discern where her fans are, where people are not so keen on her might be. It's a very bizarre way to kind of carry herself. But maybe she's just being willfully ignorant. I don't know. But I think that's the kind of faux pas she kind of had. Because even if you just explain and say, hey, I don't care about that stuff that's going on in the US. I'm, I'm whatever. I'm from wherever. I live in Berlin. I'm making this T-shirt. If you pay me, cool, right? Everyone knows where you stand. But don't, you know what I mean? Don't just like ignore it, pretend like you didn't see nothing, and then play dumb. And I think I'm, I think as well, she did that classic mistake of posting a black square and then releasing a T-shirt. That might be as well what added to the situation. So just error after error after error. But again, I still think some of the ritual that's aimed at, at her is more so aimed at the industry itself. But let's just continue with the apology. So it says. Um, first of all, for failing to see how it fits, the slogan was insensitive, especially regarding the current events that's happening in the US. It continues, it says, Secondly, from failing to see that my privilege, having never faced racial profiling firsthand from authorities, as well as living in Germany for six years, slowed me from understanding what now appears to be obvious. This t-shirt was in very poor taste definitely was my dear she says i have a lot to i have a, i've done a lot of soul searching the last 48 hours that's quick soul searching i'm generally here to make amends the first step was to of course to donate 100 percent of the sale benefits towards the campaign zero an organization i focused that's focused to put an end to police brutality i put the link in my bio if you wish to learn more about them i was not sure if i should post the receipts here but i'm happy to provide them anyone that asks for it yeah she's groveling so much here yuck the second step was doing a lot of near reading on how to acknowledge my missteps and educate myself more and more in order to become a better ally in the future um my email is whatever it is there is always open for those who have suggestions on what i could do to step do do to go a step further and also i want to thank all the people who reached out talked to me in the last 48 hours with whom i have lengthy conversations talk things through we are learning and how to become better people and i hope you will forgive me no that's true that's fair i think people should forgive her she's asking for forgiveness she's being genuine about it um i just think like I said previously, I just think she's more of a symptom of the situation. I think there's a group of DJs, a group of artists within the electronic music space who feels if they've been ignored for far too long, they feel like they've been overlooked, especially in Berlin, I'd imagine, because it's, you know, it's a pretty um, monochromatic city, to say the least, when it comes to DJ lineups. So what I would like to see as a, as a solution, because again, I just I think it's unfair that she's getting all this vitriol because I don't think it's her. No, it's not her fault. I don't think Peggy Good chooses, you know, you don't choose to be the breakout star in the electronic scene and get all the money and get all the slots that's not your choice you know the scene does what the scene does the machine does what the machine does but the issue we have which i've always said i maintained is that the scene or the industry doesn't necessarily facilitate or help the middle tier to the bottom tier artist or acts right it doesn't necessarily um, create a functioning ecosystem for them to make enough money to make a living to gain a fan base to tour all that good stuff so what i'd like to see once covid is over is the bigger establishment set a precedent like imagine Berghain, imagine um a sub club is probably a really good example maybe a fabric these kind of big institutions to lay the marker and say hey we are committed to having a lineup that forget the gender thing just having a lineup that's more representative of our city and representative of the people that go there because that's the most frustrating part you go to these clubs you go to these places the the crowd around you is you know it's a whole patina of people right from all different walks of life but then you look up at the dj booth and it's the same old boring names that's what happens mostly at festivals right festivals are, are probably a worse example of that because usually festivals attract like you know the general punter you know kind of casual fans of music and they are really diverse really wide ranging especially if you go you know to a place like i don't know like a love box right or like a primavera sound is a better example it's a very diverse group of people but usually the people playing at the electronic music space section are just boring it's the same old names the same tired faces because they just want to make sure they sell tickets and get people through the gate but i think it's a responsibility for those bigger places to set the precedent and say hey we're committed to making sure our lineups are reflective of the people that listen to this music especially the people that create this music and that's what you need to do just so it can be a little bit more balanced so if that means you have a slot in on the Berghain lineup on the panorama by lineup for a, a color 
couple of people that, that aren't the quintessential wearing of Rick Owens, white guys with flipping silver rings on, that's amazing as a first step. So then what happens is that you get those people in place, you allow them to play maybe, you know, every other month, maybe a couple of a couple of days during the week. That can then take the pressure off of someone like a Serakin who essentially is getting all the hate, is getting all the vitriol because people look at him and think, hold on, you've been in Berlin for six years, you've been DJing for four, you set up a little label in your bedroom and now suddenly you're playing all over the place at festivals and clubs that I would, you know, I've been trying to send my demo to for 17 years or whatever. I understand why you may feel angry and annoyed by that, but I still think the frustration is kind of, you know, it's directed at the wrong person, it should be directed at the institutions that keep perpetuating this idea that, you know, the music that's being made at the moment has only been made by a certain group of people when well, we know that's not true we all know that's not true you, even you, you go to some of these you know stalwarts and heavyweights in the techno scene that play there you know you go through their set list they're playing songs by everybody they don't give a fuck who makes it they're playing it from you know from some random kid in the middle of chicago or some kid somewhere in india they're playing whatever is going to hit and slap in the club so to to not have those people that producing those music that piece of music or that's influencing that music to not be on those lineups let alone for the people that kind of you know spearheaded and invented the music itself that's a whole different conversation but just for the here and now i'd love to see once covid is over a commitment from these big clubs to really really um diversify their lineups and just make it reflective of the people that are involved in the scene that's all that people are so that people like Serakin aren't going to be is that how you pronounce her name Serakin Serakin people like her won't get all the hate when they're putting out a t-shirt because people will have of an opportunity to have a chance because that's what people are getting annoyed by right she makes this t-shirt she does that thing she has a miss social misstep when everything opens up she's back playing wherever she wants there's no sort of like you know nothing sort of slows down for you but when you're the when you're the vocal critic online of these sort of actions i can understand why you'd feel as if like you're the one suffering the most because you know a program director or uh, an event manager will look at your tweets and how you go on online and be a bit perturbed and be put off either on you because you might be a bit of trouble um so i think it really is up to the big establishments to put their best foot forward and try and rectify the situation i think that would be awesome to see like panorama bar has no excuse Right, especially as a start, Panama Bar with all the house they play there, like there definitely should be more black people playing in Panama Bar. That's that's standard. And then from out from there, you just get other minorities that aren't represented on the lineup. Just get them all to be playing there more often. Get there to be more representative of the club. That's it, really. And then again, like I said, it takes a pressure of these people that the kid girls like Sarah in the middle and the lower tier who are just you know making it happen for themselves anyway. Um, it's not necessarily fair to kind of put the blame on them, but what a crazy situation man really COVID-19 is cancelling some random people but again I think there is a real skill to knowing how to read the room man and she just she just wasn't doing it because you know and that's the, that's the thing as well Why, where, where are these people's friends like does she have any friends like regular friends forget black friends just regular friends that would be like mm, babe maybe that's, maybe that's not a good time to buy the t-shirt because again a t-shirt isn't nothing to write home about it's a ba you know, it's a good t-shirt whatever design is whatever not that I'm not that hyped about it but if ever there was a, if ever there was a bad time to put out a t-shirt about and she's got a legitimate point as well right she's got this whole story about everyone telling her that she plays her music too fast and she's this little girl that's you know breaking the norms of this you know patriarchy and electronic music blah blah blah, blah. There, there is a story towards that shirt that shirt it didn't come out of nowhere but it's just so ill-timed isn't it so yeah big up her anyway in general um i think people should forgive her she's asked for apologies um she's made amends she's done all the right things really taken down a post could donate her proceeds she's done the things that she didn't need to do really you know if she was a real scumbag she would have done those things so let's give her some credit and then let, and then stop let's stop kind of aiming our cannons at you know middle tier djs who are trying to make it as much as anybody else and aim it more towards the institutions that keep booking the same bloody lineups you know 20 years 30 years 40 years in a row like they're the ones that deserve, deserve a bit more of our vitriol i would say but hey what do i know <laughs>